the Wild, Brian O'Gorman. Hello. I, uh, I like TV. I like a lot of the network stuff. Uh, you know, I really enjoy it. It's a show I'm really into, too. Uh, it comes on every night at 8. That's uh, the something show. <laughs> oh, man, I'm forgetting this TV. <laughs> the, oh, man, the... Oh, yeah, the uh, painfully repetitive network broadcast bullshit that's force-fed to the masses with the sole purpose of lulling your brain into a semi-conscious state in order to make you susceptible to their constant bombardment of repetitious subliminal advertisement that tricks you into believing that you're capable of reaching an unattainable ideal of being a rich, young, hairless water skier with perfect teeth that never farts for the rest of your life. If you would just spend enough money on creams, cars, condos, accounts, mounts, other useless shit marketing companies purposely make you feel insecure about not having in order to profit off of turning you into a brain-dead, soul-washed, fat-ass consumer slut. Show. Oh. <laughs> you know that show? <laughs> you thought I was stupid. <laughs> Just that. There is this really interesting species, though. I like. Uh, they're, they're called bonobo monkeys. Has anyone ever heard of them before? One guy dabbles in zoology. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I, I love them. They're basically our closest living relatives next to chimpanzees. The only difference is that chimps will fight in groups. They steal from each other. They murder each other. And bonobos never fight because whenever one of them gets angry or flustered, another bonobos will come up, relieve them sexually, <laughs> and they don't fight. <laughs> awesome! Utopian sex monkeys! <laughs> Wicked. I'm kind of glad we evolved out of that, though, because that would really change the scene outside of a club on a Saturday night, <laughs> you know? A couple guys fighting over a girl, like, hey, screw you, man, that's my girlfriend, stay away. Other guy's like, hey, man, back off, I had her first. Third guy's like, whoa, 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 easy, Frankie, there. <laughs> screw those guys, they're not worth it, man. You know, somebody calm that guy down. Hey, jerk off your boy, jerk off your boy. It's all right, Frank, forget about him. Don't worry about it, shh, come on. Let's go get a hot dog, you know? I do think our as culture is, is overly obsessed with uh, changing the way that you look. No one is happy with the way that they are. No, one, no one's okay with just the way that they look. And there's so many different ways to change yourself, you know. There's, there's, there's uh, boob implants and ass implants and collagen injections and anal bleaching. <laughs> you guys know about anal bleaching? <laughs> well, you're about to. <laughs> this is true. This is a practice. In Los Angeles, it costs you $200 to get your anus bleached. You know what's screwed up about that? Is there are people that are insecure about the shade of their anus. Who cares, man? You never hear a guy talking about a butter anus. Oh, my God. Yo, man, her body was so sweet and her face was hot. Butter anus. Oh, my God. <laughs> the color of Sumatran coffee. Just, no. Like, there's actually people so insecure, they're on their bathroom counters looking in the mirror going, Oh, no. I can't go outside like this. What if someone sees my anus? I'll be ruined. You know, you know who I feel bad for in the whole equation is the poor bastard that has to bleach the anus. Good luck, man. It's not a career anyone pines after. All my life, I wanted to be an anus bleacher. At first, I started with my own, but after several months of bleachings, my anus became and still is completely transparent. I moved on, bleaching the anuses of sleeping homeless people and local livestock. My passion became my obsession, and my world was filled with ass. Luckily, a local anus bleacher house saw the perfectly shaded anuses in the town and took me under his wing. He taught me that the anus was more than just a shade. He taught me that the anus had a heart. That the anus had a soul. And that the anus had a voice. And that voice spoke to me. It whispered in my ear. It said... Huh? Luckily, that story has a happy ending. That boy made it out of Paris, France, and is doing stand-up before you today. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm Stephen Harper. Good night, everyone. Have a good one.